Oh boy, maybe maybe somebody was cyber attacking it. You just never know, do you, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> Alex, That's where we are nowadays, yes. Yeah, and we have to be suspicious of everything. Alex Sharonis is on the line with us this morning. He is a cybersecurity expert, and uh, we're talking this morning about uh, the uh, power grid and whether it's vulnerable to cyber attack, other utility services, water plants, all of these different things that could affect us in our daily lives. Uh, is there somebody out there who's uh, sneaking behind the scenes electronically and, and wormering their way into the system. And particularly with this Ukraine situation, there may be m- implications there. Alex, we have four power plants uh, in, within uh, probably 20 miles here, big power plants here in Indiana County. So it's of particular concern to us uh, whether the grid uh, could be knocked out and how easily that could happen. Right, yeah. And it is an of concern, most certainly, uh, at a larger scale, critical infrastructure, not only here domestically, but internationally, has been something that has increasingly become an attack vector for bad actors. And we're seeing, you know, both successful and unsuccessful attacks, again, both domestically and internationally. And as recently as last year here domestically and more broadly internationally uh, before that. So I think it's becoming more and more commonplace, unfortunately. We had heard with the September 2001 attacks uh, on America uh, that one of the potential targets was one of our power plants here in Indiana County, and there was great speculation as to whether that could actually have happened. And uh, that takes something from being, hey, that's New York City, that's Washington, D.C., to to our little town here in Indiana County. Now the attacks uh, are, uh, well, they're more subtle, I guess, if they're coming from the cyber universe, aren't they? They can be, they can be, uh, and that's typically, you know, the, the uh, leading tip of the spear when it comes to uh, attacks nowadays. You know, we're seeing an increase in the use of information campaigns as one component of hybrid warfare, and you see what's going on across the Atlantic right now. You see a combination of both traditional military tactics in kinetic warfare as well as informational warfare, one of which happens to be cyber warfare. And, under what, that umbrella. Um, and of course, the scary thing about it is uh, these can be small time hoods. These could be government sponsored terrorists. Uh, it's just hard to say what angle it's coming at you from. But there are just so many more players in the game. Most certainly. Yeah. When we talk about that at, at, a, at a high level, we're looking at, you know, uh, nation states, state sponsored activities that you're referring to. And then at a smaller, uh, smaller level, you'll see more gang level activity. Uh, or in even some situations, you'll see hacktivists kind of uh, doing doing some things as well. And, and all of those are things that have happened even in the last week here in, at, at the international scale. So take us inside the power grid itself. Let's focus there. The power grid in the United States, uh, I'm sure very few people know how it is set up. But we see the power plants. We say, all right, they're sending out juice and somebody is receiving it on the other end. It's much more complicated than that. And being that complicated, that means there are probably many more ports of entry for people to get in and do bad things. Yeah, that, that's right. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that and, and kind of feel a lens of, of separation between traditional IT security and then operational technology, OT security, which is what we're talking when it comes to critical infrastructure. In the OT world, it used to be that, hey, these protocols and code that was used on these systems that that manage and and monitor these uh, industrial control systems were so obscure that it was kind of hack-proof. That was what the quote-unquote view uh, for a long time. Fast forward, that that most certainly was not the case, and the convergence between IT and OT has been a, a situation that has increased the attack surface and allowed a lot more nefarious activity to occur as a result of that. You know, we, we go back in time, you can, you can see what happened uh, to Iran with Stuxnet and taking off their, their power grid for a considerable amount of time mm-hmm. uh, with one of their reactors. And then you can see things, you know, as recently as uh, I think it was in the last seven years uh, against uh, Ukraine and, and taking their, you know, uh, energy uh, offline as well. And then here domestically, you know, we see uh, both successful and unsuccessful attacks uh, in critical infrastructure over the last year whether that's Colonial Pipeline from a gas perspective or if it's a water treatment facility, which was uh, defended correctly and prevented an attack in Florida last year. So we see these things on an ongoing basis. But at the end of the day, yeah, it's, it's that, that critical, critical infrastructure and in, in the hardware and software that support the systems that create and manage 
whatever it is that it, whether it's electricity or gas, uh, that making sure it's being managed correctly and that there's no unauthorized access to that. So our governments uh, could very well wage war in that way, and 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 there's the thought that uh, if our government will attack another. Um, government's uh, power grid or water supply or whatever that uh, critical infrastructure might be, then uh, we could um, say, well, then we're fair game for them as well, which requires us to be really, really vigilant, doesn't it? Yeah, most certainly. And, and, you know, uh, be prepared, you know, borrowing a a page from the Boy Scouts book here, that is the mentality here. And we we should be ever vigilant and be prepared uh, for all of these possibilities here uh, stateside. Most certainly to your comment, you know, not only do we have defensive capabilities here domestically, but obviously we've also got offensive capabilities. So while this industry has been developing over the last several decades, you know, we haven't been sitting on our hands either. So are we extremely vulnerable here in America or are we pretty well buttoned up? We're pretty well buttoned up, but, uh, you know, from from where I sit on a daily basis, my response to that is we can always be doing a better job. So I think, you know, humans continue to be the, the weakest link in, in all of these attacks. And uh, if we can make sure that we're at a minimum, you know, educating ourselves both at an individual, corporate, and then certainly uh, government level, whether that's municipal, state, or, or federal, that we're doing an effective job at understanding what the threats are out there and that we're preparing ourselves and practicing for bad situations. Well, with Vladimir Putin having used actually that word, uh, we're going to threaten anybody that would come after us uh, with sanctions or, or any other sort of measure with this Ukraine situation. Uh, uh, is is he capable of uh, following through on those threats, and, and would our grid be one of those vulnerabilities? I'd say the capabilities are certainly there, as illustrated here uh, with with Ukraine in the weeks leading up to the actual military conflict that we're seeing. You know, they were in a state of hybrid well, warfare before what we're seeing here in the last 48 hours. So uh, m- most certainly attacking their financial systems, their government websites, taking those offline, causing uh, the data deletion and, and causing havoc is something that they've been pretty effective at in the last couple of weeks, at, at least in that time period that we're aware of at the moment. Uh, you know, here domestically, most certainly, you know, we, we've got our defenses in place and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we stand ready and, and, and at any kind of turn that we're seeing here. Uh, again, I think we could be doing, you know, a more effective job, spending more money than we are, even though it's at an all-time high right now, spending more time and being more vigilant about it. Alex Sharonis is a cyber expert and a partner at Headstorm. What do you do? What's Headstorm do? Headstorm uh, specializes in cybersecurity consulting services as well as uh, engineering services, software engineering services. And, and of course, uh, folks will certainly be calling upon companies such as yours to, to, to shore up whatever they perceive to be weaknesses. Unfortunately, uh, in, in that world, Alex, um, it, it seems you're not aware of your vulnerabilities until they've already been exploited. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, it's kind of like preventive health care, right? You want to make sure that you're exercising, eating well, and taking steps necessary to make sure that you stay in good health. The same is true when it comes to your your cybersecurity posture, making sure that you're having regular check-ins, making sure that you're taking, you know, uh, defensive measures, making sure that you're, you're acting and behaving in a healthy way to prepare for anything that could be potentially troublesome. Yeah. It's a lot easier to be prepared than to be reactive in these situations. So being proactive in your security posture is, is paramount to make sure that, you know, we're, we're, we're ready at an individual and, and collective level here. Absolutely. I guess uh, we could say that uh, you can do all the exercise and be in the best shape as possible. But if you step off the curb at the wrong time, you could still get run over by a truck, huh? And that's a great, great analogy. All right. Well, Alex, uh, as I told an earlier guest this morning, we were talking about Ukraine. I'd like to say I feel better after this conversation, but I don't. (laughs) Well, uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is a going concern and and something that we should all be paying attention to here uh, here domestically, most certainly. Alex Sharonis, thanks for joining us this morning. It's been informative. I appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. AM 11.